up, we have Dr. Antonella Chada Santoccioni, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, uh, from the Swiss Agency uh, for Therapeutic Products, who will share with us the regulator's view on how to streamline and harmonize the global drug development pathway for Alzheimer's disease treatment. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks, Natasha, for this kind introduction. And uh, thanks to the organizer of the Brain Forum 2016 for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, a topic which I find extremely important, how to harmonize and how to conceptualize the uh, global development for a treatment against Alzheimer's. Alzheimer, it is a life-threatening condition. It is a devastating disease. I would say one of the worst you, as a human, can face, not only because it's taking away your own personality and dignity, but also because it happens towards the end of our life, when you are more vulnerable and less resilient. Said that, we have been, in the last decades, facing the unfortunate situation of uh, seeing clinical trials failing along the line. And I would like to share with you, uh, in my opinion, which might be the possible causes of uh, um, the situation we have seen. So uh, I believe that uh, one of the most uh, um, important reasons why the trials have been failing relies on the fact that still very less it is known about the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease, which is a multifactorial disease. Clinical trials were performed also when the disease was too advanced, namely the brain was too damaged to see an impact of the drug, uh, if any. The diagnostic is also a crucial point. To diagnose Alzheimer's disease, it is not an easy task. And this leads to include patients which are too heterogeneous in the studied population in a trial. I remember myself during my clinical years, which is less than 10 years ago, using the symptomatic of the patients and uh, using the tools we had available at the moment for diagnosis, we were pretty sure this is a likely possible case of Alzheimer's disease, and then post-mortem it turned out to be another form of, of, of dementia and vice versa. Clinical trials might have been also performed with insufficient dosage of the drug to meaningfully impact the disease process. And this is not surprising. We are talking about brain disease, and we are all very scared about the safety consequences of using something impacting our brain. Finally, and I think this is also a very crucial point, uh, there have been, in my opinion, uh, a two less sharing of the reason why the trials have been failing among the, those who perform the trials. And uh, I said at the beginning that uh, Alzheimer's, it is a multifactorial uh, disease. Therefore, as also Andrea mentioned, it is extremely important to start to think about a combination treatment approach. We can't think of the successful trial for a multifactorial disease using one single drug only. So which are the possible solutions? Well, very obvious one, I would say. First of all, we should invest much more money in uh, Alzheimer's disease research. We should try to address the disease in earlier stages when the symptoms maybe are not yet occurring. And we should share among the relevant stakeholders the reason why the trials have been failing so far. We should try to also design better proof of concept uh, trials. We have to keep in mind that most of the ones who fail in this field in fact fail in this precise phase, proof of concept. Uh, we should try to improve uh, also the diagnosis of Alzheimer, as I already mentioned, to try to enrich the trials with the specific right population for the specific right drug. We should go for a combined approach, this I mentioned already, and uh, also very importantly, we should identify those preventive factors to um, defeat the known risk factor linked to Alzheimer's disease. Said that, uh, this is a debate which is uh, ongoing worldwide, and uh, uh, we all understand that there is in this field a huge unmet medical need. Uh, therefore, uh, the OECD took over and um, started to organize a worldwide task force trying to combine and bring together the relevant stakeholders to uh, fight against this problem. 
And in this regard, also regulators have been asked to join in forces. Regulators from all over the world uh, are currently meeting uh, to discuss what can be done from our side. And uh, this is about uh, FDA, EMA, Swiss Medic, which is the Swiss Authority for Medicinal Product. Uh, it's about the Japan Authority and uh, the German Authority, and such as and so forth, just to give you a dimension of how big this initiative it is. Uh, regulators do have not only the role to work on behalf of the society and for the society to bring safe drugs on the market and make it accessible to the patients, but they also have the role to facilitate drug development. And in doing so, we do provide scientific advice and we do, when possible, uh, provide guidelines which are suggestive of how to design a trial for the specific disease. Worldwide, the most important uh, guidelines uh, uh, available for uh, Alzheimer's disease are certainly the FDA ones, the European ones, also the Japanese ones. I will not mention those but for the uh, uh, sake of time today. The um, uh, FDA guidelines, uh, which were released uh, in 2013, are addressing the fact that uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease starts uh, uh, already earlier than uh, the symptoms occur, and they stress the point that biomarkers are crucial as to be considered uh, biological hallmarks of the disease itself. Um, and among those, certainly the most known one at the moment are A beta and tau. Of the same opinion, it is the uh, European um, draft uh, guideline, which has been recently re released at the beginning of this year, in January. And uh, here it said that uh, Alzheimer's is indeed a continuum uh, of uh, a disease which has uh, a very um, asymptomatic, long asymptomatic stage of 10 up to 20 years. And here, even here, it is uh, stressed the point of the need of uh, valid biomarkers to monitor the disease and eventually to be able to detect the uh, change in, on the disease progression occurring towards a specific medical treatment. Um, and this might change the case scenario how regulators will, address, will assess uh, drugs. In this table, which is quite uh, uh, <laughs> filled in, I just uh, uh, um, extrapolated which are the uh, relevant clinical outcome measures described in the FDA guidelines versus the EMA1. Actually, there is a strong harmonization. And if we now look at uh, where we should study the disease, basically prodromal uh, and MCI mainly, uh, there is an harmonization between the two guidelines which, unmo which moved from thinking that cognition and functioning had to be addressed towards the fact that uh, this is an ideal situation. The reality looks a little bit more difficult and uh, they are both conveying on the fact that most likely cognition is more than enough. Not to speak about the fact that we might use composite endpoints, we might use, we might use new tools to, which have of course to be still validated and uh, biomarkers which uh, could become a, a real surrogate measure for the treatment uh, efficacy. Now, um, said that, uh, we recently experienced uh, that this is really the case, that the reality corresponds to exactly this because uh, of uh, uh, one communication, for instance, that Lily shared with the public saying that they moved with uh, one still ongoing clinical trials uh, called Expedition 3, including 2,100 patients, uh, from assessing cognition and uh, functioning to only cognition. And this is quite understandable. I didn't mention to you that this might happen simply because of the fact that the patients are still capable in the early phase of the disease to compensate for their functioning. They can still function somehow while the cognition still starts to impair and decline. So maybe that's the way to look at things. Now, towards the end of my talk, I just want to give you a little learning from what we had from the past. Uh, we know what statins are. These are drugs uh, meant to lower the cholesterol in our blood to prevent cardiovascular disease.
diseases. The studies were developed uh, in the 70s, uh, I think from a Japanese scientist, and uh, uh, this uh, discovery was at the beginning a little bit controversial. They also spoke about the conspiracy of the lipid hypothesis, uh, because people did not really believe about the fact that lowering cholesterol in the blood might have translated into prevent cardiovascular diseases. Nonetheless, scientists went on um, and uh, FDA uh, authorized the conduction of a trial on a healthy volunteer which had high uh, cholesterol level in their blood uh, with lovastatin. Uh, in parallel, it became obvious thanks to a study which collected mainly epidemiological data uh, that uh, uh, while controlling your diet and while using cholesterol, I mean, which is not a, a statin, it might have been possible to reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases, not extremely high, but significant. And this made the scientific community think, well, maybe that's really true, that uh, this is the way to go. Uh, such as in 87, FDA, uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, scientists and uh, with uh, um, uh, industry, uh, have been able to uh, release uh, statins on the market in less than nine months, which is a brilliant example of how several stakeholders, basically scientists or academia, uh, uh, pharma and uh, um, regulators can work together. Of course, then starting went along the way farther. Now, just let's look at the uh, guidelines for statins and uh, uh, let's see at what they suggest to try to make an analogies between what is this field and uh, what could be Alzheimer in a future, future uh, scenario. So uh, these guidelines also uh, mention the fact that we could use composite and point uh, to address the disease, basically more morbidity and mortality. Uh, but uh, interestingly, when we speak about lipid levels, uh, they say that a relative reduction in LDL cholesterol is acceptable as a primary efficacy and point, provided that the claims of the drug in the label are restricted to lipid lowering effects. Effect. said that if we will be able in the future to identify a valid biomarker which uh, uh, shows that uh, uh, by lowering this specific biomarker there is an impact on this disease progression, this might be a way to go and not necessarily look at the classical uh, believed endpoints like uh, cognition and functioning. Uh, and finally also an analogy can be done uh, about the uh, target organ damage. Here they speak about uh, uh, the vascular system, we are talking about the brain but nevertheless, here it's possible to implement the use of the tools in diagnostic like neuroimaging as well. So um, this is the end of my talk. And uh, my message is basically, let's look at the future. Let's try to find the drug to treat this devastating disease. Focus on the present, bringing the relevant stakeholders to work together, that's really a must. But maybe also look at the past and have a little learning. You know, humans try to forget what is history. And uh, yeah, maybe it's a way to go. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed.